Hello everyone, it's Joel Davis with the United Medical Transportation Providers Group. You are the broker.com and home care access. And we got a lot of content, a lot of stuff to go through. I know we're never gonna make it through it all, but we're gonna start first and foremost. Mario, I'm wearing your other shirt, brother. Mario is one of my client providers, one of my Mexicanos from the great state of Texas. Soon. I'll be in Texas as well. But uh, thanks so much for sending me the shirts, Mario. I told you, I'm going to sport them in my videos. I appreciate it. Um, so we've got a lot of good content, a lot of good stuff to go over. I'm just going to dive in. We're going to kind of be all over the place. And we'll just get through as much as we possibly can before I got to go. All right, first and foremost, this is from a client provider. She just sent this to me, like, recently. But I want to share this with you because um, so many uh, people have considered similar stuff. There's so many different apps out there that are essentially a broker. Okay, they're trying to basically be a broker and um, you sign up, just join their app, and they're just basically an app, and they're going to try. They're going to go out there and try to harvest trips for you and feed them to you. And um, you don't make any money with them. Take a look at this one. I blocked out the names because I'm not going to advertise someone else's stuff. But take a look at this one. We got great news. Blank is growing and we need drivers like you. We are recruiting drivers and blah, blah, blah to start ASAP. If you're ready to join a winning team, give us a call to get started. Please do not visit the main office until next steps are confirmed. Apply here. Hours 8 to 4, Monday through Friday. But look at the rates. Check out our rates with enthusiasm. Take a look at our rates. Garbage. You can never grow and scale with that. That's that's worse than like a logistic care rate, man. That's crazy. Blank is following CDC guidelines because we all know the CDC never lies. And they're so spot on. Flatten the curve. Passengers and drivers are required to wear a mask during transport. In addition, drivers are mandated to, to disinfect high contact areas and vehicles fre frequently throughout the day. Flatten the curve! <laughs> Such a joke. How's that working out for you? Anyways, my point is this. You, if you were to go to this website, it and the website it advertises, makes $30 an hour, which means you ain't making $30 an hour. The point is, you're never going to grow in scale. Look, if you want to be an Uber driver, a Lyft driver, you know, uh, just grind your car down, have at it, but you cannot grow in scale with this. You're never going to make money. So keep that in mind, because these, these apps are popping up on every other corner. There, it's just like when Obamacare came out and um, all the, the Medicaid brokers started popping up on every other corner. Same thing with these apps. Everyone's trying to make a quick buck. Everyone's trying to make money. They're trying to use you as the sharecropper. Avoid that nonsense. Some questions about DME. Why are we? Not, why is DME dispatch made easy not compatible with logistic care's program, MTMs, or any of these other brokers? A couple reasons why. Number one, first and foremost, the way they're structured in different states, the way that they um, convey trips to you, the transportation providers, is different in almost every state. And if they make one movement and their business model, then we gotta move. And we're not doing that. I'm not wasting my time with that. The purpose of DME is to be a flat fee, 97 bucks a month, that's it. Doesn't matter how many trips you have. If you got huge volume, 97 bucks a month. You got a ton of drivers, 97 bucks a month. I'm a stickler on it. I'm not going above $97 a month. So A, we're not gonna, we're not going to be a reactionary platform that if someone that we're dependent upon moves and makes a change, that we gotta adapt to it. Not wasting my time with that. Bigger issue is, even more so, we're not going to be compatible with brokers because brokers, if they have access to, to, to the platform, if it's compatible, then they have access to your platform. They could literally spy, drop in on, and see anything you're doing all the time. Uh, we're not doing that, bottom line. So in an effort to uh, basically protect our users, uh, we're not going to be compatible with another platform that has the ability to access your information. Do we have a lot of users that do broker work and they use DME? Yes, they all use it a little bit differently, uh, but um, we're not gonna allow a broker to be able to drop in, access your account, see what you're doing, especially because some of our, some of our providers, 
they're doing the unloaded and deadhead mileage. Hey man, squeeze out every penny you can get and don't put yourself in a position where the brokers can spy on you. That's basically what it comes down to. Um, I remember this is a couple years ago, like two, three years ago, Logistic Care was hard on us trying to get us to see if we could, we would come in and adapt and make ourselves compatible. It was something crazy. We're talking six figures worth of investment in, in, uh, in development to be compatible. And again, if they make any change thereafter, we'd have to be reactionary and adapt to them. Screw them. I'm not dealing with that. Um, I want to read this. This is from a client provider I've been working with for a while. Great dude. Good dude. Looks the part, speaks the part. Um, smart, intelligent, and you can see that he's gaining momentum. He's gaining confidence and things are just lining up for him. He's come, long story short, um, he's been a contract carrier. Now he, he went to a hearing to become, to gain common carrier status. And so he's, and he's so, he was always concerned about, um, you know, how's it going to go? How, you know, and we would go back and forth, get this information, show that information. He was always concerned and everything. And so he contacts me right afterwards and he says, the hearing went sensationally well, capital letters. I had an answer for every question the judge asked me. And even when she asked me, how do I plan to go about advertising, advertising my business? I brought the, uh, the marketing materials that your media team made. The judge even said, quote, I can see the numbers on the card perfectly even from here. She was about 20 feet away from me. Uh, the blue and the white really made uh, the information jump out, she said. So kudos to your, so this is my client provider saying this. He says, so kudos to your media team for the great uh, marketing materials. Once again, uh, once everything was finished and the hearing came to a close, the judge told me that I was, quote, very well prepared and that I should not think that it will not go unnoticed. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, she also told me that many who apply for the permission to become common carrier status in his area, quote, are not prepared and usually don't get a second chance. So again, he had everything lined up. We had all the content, all the information, facts, figures, all this kind of good stuff. Had great marketing material, all that stuff. Boom. Um, let's see, where was that? Uh, she also told me that many who apply for this permission, quote, are not prepared and usually don't get a second chance. So the fact that all of this came from a judge really gave me an elevated sense of accomplishment. So again, thanks for your assistance from you and your team. That's awesome. And so this dude also, we've been doing some, um, some broker work. We're setting up a broker component to his NEMT business. And he actually had some people who applied from out of state, as in like far out of state. He's down south. He had a guy that applied from Michigan and another one from PA who, hey, man, times are tough. People got to make a buck. These guys are willing to travel down, relocate to work as independent contractors in his business. So, again, he's already running an NEMT business, but now we're starting to develop a contractor component with it as well. So, awesomeness. Love it. Here's a, here's a situation I want to talk about for sure because I see this every once in a while. Uh, sometimes, you know, I always talk about you've got to be very cautious and weary of who you listen to and what content you put in your mind. Uh, you know, there's a lot of white walkers out there, all the freebie experts online, all the fake book groups, all the nonsense, and they are feeding it, just people absolute crap. It's crazy. Anyways, these white walkers. So, um, couple, so anyways, here's the deal. If I'm working with you one-on-one, -on -one, understand, I'm not going to waste my time fighting with you. If I got to fight with you and struggle with you to try to get you to move in the right direction, I'm not going to waste my time. Um, this... You know, I get this every once in a while, so I'm just going to use this client provider's scenario as an example. Because some of you, I guarantee, have, have been in the same situation or considered it, whatever. But first and foremost, he's he compares himself to someone else. So he's in one state, and he compares himself to someone in a completely different state who's literally like five states over. Do you think those markets might be different? Not only are those markets different, 
but he keeps comparing himself and talking about what this guy was telling him and the advice he was giving him. Mind you, the person he's listening to is all broker. So first and foremost, they're literally like five states apart from each other. So A, the, uh, the communities, the dynamics, the markets are completely different. B, even the brokers will operate differently in these two markets. So again, we're still comparing apples to oranges. It's not the same. Um, but if you want to model yourself after that, then go do it. My goal, my vision for you in building your business is to, sure, we're going to go after some broker work as long as it's viable, feasible, profitable. If it's not, boom, we're out. We're bouncing. It's not going to be like uh, those rates I just showed you a minute ago from this app where essentially they're trying to operate like a broker and the rates are garbage. We're not going to take garbage rates. So um, this client provider, and again, I'm picking on him because I see other people do the same thing. So then he uh, we we he actually found a good vehicle, a little high price, but we're like, hey, this is a good opportunity, and et cetera, et cetera. So long story short, he's going after this, and then he's talking to the guy selling the vehicle, and then all of a sudden, now now we have another person who's chirping in his ear, telling him, giving him suggestions. So all this free brother-in-law advice, all this free White Walker advice, you got so many cooks in the kitchen stirring the pot, and you just get nothing but utter confusion. So. Then this client provider, now he's like, you know what, maybe we should start with three vehicles. Mind you, has a full-time job. Granted, he has flexible hours, so he's still going to be very much involved in his business, but has a full-time job, so automatically we're starting with labor costs uh, at the beginning. But now we got more people feeding in his brain who are telling him, hey, maybe you should start make a make a great you know first impression. Get, you know, and who is he trying to impress? The brokers. The brokers, because in some areas, not all, in some areas, the brokers won't even consider if you, unless you have a minimum of three vehicles. Who cares? Who cares? Who are you trying to impress? Brokers? Keep in mind, broker work, Medicaid, only comprises about you know 40 ish if you're gonna go high go go 50 I don't care it only comprises half even though it's not that much it's less than half of the market of the NAMT transportation so why are we gonna cater to only half of it and of that half less than half really we know that it's the low-hanging fruit that's the lowest rates of reimbursement it's and, and the and greater regulation what why why would we go why would we start with three vehicles no prior experience, full-time job, even though flexibility, so we can we can um, um, you know be involved in the business, which is great. Um, why would we put ourselves out there? Again, I'm all about protect the capital investment, protect the cash flow. And again, I'm not bagging on this transportation provider. He's a newbie, and I've told him before. Um, you know, you're only seeing what's in front of you. I look at the whole board. I'm looking at everything out there of what we're going to do, long-term, short-term, everything. So I'm not bagging at him, but I see so many other people do the same type of thing. Why would you want to cater and put yourself in a position, follow that field of dream strategy? If you build it, they will come. No. And especially with brokers, we have to make good decisions and we make our decisions on the margins. I don't want to go too far off on this because I could write a doctoral dissertation on this. But um, my response to him, he, he wrote a very nice email. And my response was, uh, in regards to starting with two more vans with no contract in hand, no existing uh, cash flow, and no prior experience, I can tell we're going to part ways on this topic. I suspect you have multiple people chirping in your ear with different philosophies. Ultimately, it is your business because I'm not going to argue with you. Ultimately, it's your business and you make the decision. I can definitely do my best to advise you, but I definitely won't fight or argue with the client uh, to encourage them to move in a particular direction. I trust you understand. So if you retain my services, I can only assume that if you retain my services and those on my team, you're ready to go all in. If you're not, trust me, go follow the White Walkers. Follow all that freebie stuff online. Again, you've got all these, all the, the cooks in the kitchen that just make a disaster. I see it all the time. I could go on and on. Let me go on. Here's This is a different topic, but this is important. This is why you need to make real money. One important reason why you need to make sure that you make real money 
that A, you don't sign up with these stupid apps that give you no rates of reimbursement, why you don't build your business uh, on, on quicksand, i.e. focusing on brokers with the lowest rates of reimbursement and lower ROI. The reason why you've got to make real money is because you have, you've got to make money to recapitalize so you can build, grow, and scale, but you've also got to, you've got to have money for multiple reasons. One of them is potential lawsuit. Um, lawsuits could be, uh, you know, was in like someone is le le legitimately negligent of something and that's obviously it's going to lead to a lawsuit, but it doesn't matter what business you're in. It doesn't matter. Pick any industry. You always got to be, be able to protect yourself legally. But now this is the third time that people are retaining my services now because now I've been retained by a law firm, by a client. I'm working with the law firm. Uh, who's representing my, my, the client because uh, one of the, it was a partnership and one of them, one of the members passed away and uh, now you have the, uh, the widow, the wife of the deceased member now suing the other member um, for money, for costs, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, they didn't have all the proper, in my opinion, I, I, would have, I would have had things in place to protect the business uh, in the event of a lawsuit, whether it's life insurance policies and, and other things. But long story short, now we're at a situation, again, this is, again, keep things in mind. I've been doing this for, what, almost two decades. This is the third time I've been in a situation like this where the widow suing the existing members for the business, for their rights, all that kind of stuff, money. And when they sue, they are grossly, grossly, uh, and I'm sure it's all motivated off of push by their attorneys that they retain, uh, they are grossly over-exaggerating the value of the business. Now, the existing partner made her a very good and generous offer that is legitimate. I've gone through the business. I've looked at the business. Uh, based upon what's realistic, what's viable, and everything, uh, she refused. And again, it could be, again, people chirping in your ear. It could be her attorney is driving it. But regardless, now it's an ugly situation that's going to cost everybody more money. Had this widow, and I'm, not, and I'm not trying to belittle her in any way. Again, she's probably controlled by her handlers, uh, you know, her, her attorneys there, who they all want their money. So they want big money. But again, they're, they're expecting, you can't bleed a stone. The business makes a little less than a million dollars, but they're trying to equate it that's worth street value of multiple millions of dollars, which no. So long story short, now I'm involved in uh, to be a uh, expert witness to, to give a strong valuation of the business, et cetera, et cetera. So my point in all this is a few things. Number one, you need to make sure you take care of yourself legally with your, your uh, business and your partners, things of that nature. And you also need to make real money. You've got to make real money. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but you've got to make real money so that you can always afford attorneys to make sure that you, everything that you are involved in is properly protected. Um, couple things, couple things. All right, so um, this has proven to be a actual opportunity uh, for people, we're getting a lot of feedback from people because uh, as we have been developing um, uh, market analysis, so so uh, you know Dan, Charlie, Don, they're constantly every single day they're working on, on market analysis for for our clients. So one thing that they are really discovering more and more is that we already know that everyone has a labor shortage. Every single business, every single industry, everything. And a lot of these hospitals, a lot of these nursing homes, especially now because of all the employee mandates, you got to get rid of them. All the heroes, all these people who've been heroes for the last two years, now they're zeros. Got to get rid of them because they didn't take the magic elixir. You don't take the magic elixir, gone. Because remember, we're under such a pandemic that if people are just stacking up in the streets, but you could afford to lose a high percentage of your labor force. But regardless... Um, so now one thing that they're really starting to discover is how shorthanded a lot of these facilities are because a lot of these people have left because they're not taking the magic elixir. 
So that is actually leading to uh, more opportunities for work for our NEMT providers because now some of those facilities that would provide transportation uh, or even partial transportation with their own vehicles, their own staff, they're shorthanded and they can't send people out like that as much. Uh, the other thing it's it's opening up to is different type of opportunity. So uh, one thing when I'm working with people and we talk about different strategies for penetrating facilities is leading to new opportunities for uh, transportation providers. So although this is a losing proposition for facilities for sure, this labor uh, crisis and everything about this labor crisis is just so flipping incredible. So flippin' incredible because it is all social, engineered, man-made, absolute cluster F. Man-made cluster F. And I'll try to uh, make sure that we remember to put some links in the, in down down below so you can uh, down below the video so you can check out some of these these videos. But anyways, long story short. Um, in developing these custom market analysis, you take these leads. Um, we are going to try to cultivate as much information for you as possible. So when you're soliciting these facilities, so um, understand a lot of these facilities that are saying that they operate their own vehicle, they have their own staff. Right now, because of the labor shortage, their ability to provide transportation services is even more spotty. So take advantage of it. The other thing, man, I absolutely love this stuff. So I've always said, politics directly affects policy, which directly affects money. And I love, I love you Loon Tunes. I love you Loon Tunes that just, mmm. You voted for the sleepy, creepy, dementia patient with the cackling sidekick Medusa. Now you got buyer's remorse. And now you go on LinkedIn and you talk about all the challenges. This is a challenging, challenging time. This is a challenging work environment. And we as leaders, we need to cultivate good environments for our employees and embrace them. You know what? Go ahead. Keep kissing your employees' butts because you know what? They're going to be the first ones to screw you. I'm not saying don't take care of them. I'm not saying don't love them. But the, the, the propaganda, the nonsense you people put out there on your Facebook pages and your LinkedIn is such garbage. Such shallow, superficial, superficial fluff. Absolute crap. But I love, I love. Politics directly affects policy, which directly affects your money. I love the proposed gas tax. I love it. I wonder, I wonder, don't even look at it. Don't even look, don't even look at it. Like, how is it going to affect your business? Regardless of whatever business you're in, it doesn't matter. The proposed gas tax, eight cents per mile. Man, man how many miles do you put on in your business? How many miles you put on in your, take business aside, just life in general, you know, going here, going there, your family. And you loon tunes, you vote for this nonsense. It's absolutely effing insane. Actually, all the more reason why you, again, this is why I keep saying, especially in challenging times such as this, like all you uh, LinkedIn yahoos keep posting. These are challenging times, and we as leaders, we need to be more creative and, and cultivate a climate that is uh, beneficial to developing our employees and our staff. Shut up with that fluff. Again, I can go off on that. But again, this is why you need to have a dynamic business model that uh, includes everything from your transportation. You have to have a broker component, uh, home care where you're not reliant. Home care... If you are focusing on private pay with your home care, then you're in a position where you can uh, uh, charge for mileage if one of your caregivers is actually transporting um, uh, a patient, a client. Um, but if your if your rates, if your reimbursements in your home care business are typically coming from government contracts, then you're not going to be transporting them. So that's where your transportation business kicks in. So there's Again, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole because there's a lot to explain with that. But again, if your home care business is just private pay, then your caregivers can do some of the transportation as long as they have the, the, the type of vehicle and, and the ability to do it. 
If not, then your NEMT business does it. But if you're doing government contract work for your home care, uh, they're not going to reimburse for transportation. They're going to find a different source for transportation. That's where your NEMT business kicks in again. So that's where you, it's like a layered effect. You have a dynamic business model. Um, I just had I just got I just got to do this because it's actually posted by CNN. CNN. We are at a CNN, the Communist News Network, the the Clinton News Network. Absolute garbage. Absolute garbage. But even they admit. Even they admit. We got a 30-year high on inflation. 30. I just, I just wonder, is like, how does that affect? How does that affect anything? How does that affect? How does that affect how you're living? How does that affect how, like, when you're taking the family out and you want to go do something with the family? How's that? How's it like? Literally, you're just trying to go through a drive-through. I mean, gone are the days you could just get, a, you know, a burger, fries, and a drink for like 10 bucks. Now, it's like. 20 bucks or whatever it's craziness but how does that affect business how, everybody every single person is in fact is, is somehow one way or another affected or influenced by the insanity that's why politics directly affects policy which directly affects your money further i love this love this i wonder how much you're going to be feeling this type of stuff because we're all feeling it. I mean, literally going to the store. I was in the store the other day and you can see that even some of the store shelves are going bare. Why? Look at this. Look at this. Why your Thanksgiving and Christmas are going to be more expensive this year. 60 full cargo ships are still anchored off New York City and LA. Global supply chain is warned of coming system collapse. Any of you who do any, you again, I, I always encourage you guys stay off the fake news, lamestream media, the regular news. Pay attention, do your own research, pay attention to alternative news media, stuff like that. Um, you know, watch some of these globalist loon tunes. I mean, they tell you what they want to do. They tell you what they want to do with the big, big, build back better, build back better, the build back better plan in Congress. I mean, it's such, it's such a laughable joke. The, the thing is, is that 90 plus percent of the population, they're never going to do their due diligence. They're never going to do their homework. They're absolute sheeple. They just follow. They just follow. Uh, they follow the herd. They follow what their family should do. For them, it's just a cultural decision, whatever. No, no, no prudence, no sound uh, decision making on how to do certain things, whether it's voting the right way, whether it's uh, dealing with your money, your finances, how you build your business. I mean, I could go off on tangents here. I just want to share some of these tidbits because they're, they're, they are so interrelated. Joel, what does this have to do with your NEMT business? What does this have to do with your home care business? What does this have to do with your broker business? What does this have to do with your courier, courier business? Everything, everything. Cost of this is going up. Cost of that's going up. Thirty. You got Loon Tunes Communist News Network sitting here talking. They're acknowledging we're at a thirty-year high for inflation. That affects every aspect of your business. Politics directly affects policy, which directly affects your money. That's why it's absolutely critical you deploy sound policies, strategies, have a, a dynamic business model, like I've talked about in previous videos. Uh, have your own consulting business that extracts uh, a paycheck from your core businesses. From there, you further diversify. This gives you legal options, legal uh, strategies for moving money legally, legally to further limit your exposure taxation. You have got to find a way to make more money. How long have I been saying this man-made laughable crisis that we're in? And it is laughable because it is man-made and it's very much a crisis that could all be avoided. But it's all designed by design, purposefully, intentionally. You have got to be able to grow your way through it. If you think you're just going to sit back and weather the storm, you're going to lose a lot. You're going to lose a lot and you're going to be more vulnerable. You have got to grow your way through this. That's the only way to get through all of this insanity. And again, the most disgusting part of all of this 
is so much of this is avoidable. We are in the bread basket land of global opportunity. America is the best country, great resources, everything. We should never want for anything. We should never have a shortage. But this is where feckless, weak need leadership has landed us. Whether you're from the demonic party or the party of Judas, either or one or other, doesn't matter. You're both jacked the F up. And you sell out politicians have put us in this situation. But you, as the motivated entrepreneur, the true backbone of our country, uh, that everybody keeps just abusing, whipping, beating you down, trying to crush the middle class, uh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I put out a couple, video ago, a couple videos ago, I mentioned the storm is here. The storm is here. We are in the storm. Things are going to get uglier in the short term, but then they're going to get better. Then we're going to they're going to get better. It's going to get ugly. It's got to be more brutal, but then it's going to get better. Because God's on our side. The good guys are going to win. And as long as you keep uh, being diligent, making good, sound business decisions on the margins, so you let your numbers dictate your movement so you don't waste your capital investment, squander your capital investment, you don't become financially overextended, um, you have a, a strong positive cash flow, a, dyna a dynamic cash flow that gives you options. Do all that. Trust in God, have confidence in yourself, be opportunistic, we're going to win in the end. And when we win, there's only one thing I can possibly do. See you at the top!